today uh, we're going to be going over personal stories and talking about ideas on how to share uh, uh, our, uh, our wonderful faith with others. And uh, we're modeling a grateful and caring mindset in our interaction with others, talking to non technical people about the faith and engaging with the community through Hinokushin. Um, this, is, this is only really part of the scope of our, our workshop today, because as you know, some of our friends here, um, they are mostly first generation. That means that they were not born in a Tendika church. They were not born in Tendika faith. Their parents, save one, is born, from, born and raised uh, in a different faith. And so some of those things, keep in mind, because we're going to have a question and answer later, uh, keep in mind some of those questions. What was it like? Because a lot of us, I was born in a Tendika family, but they might... They were not. So um, those kinds of questions will, will come up as well. Okay? Okay. I'd like to go into personal. Everybody has a little bit of an introduction of themselves. So we're going to go over each person in, in the panel today. Okay? So we'll, we'll start with uh, Mr. Craig Nishio. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Craig Nishio, and I'm from Hawaii. Um, I wasn't really prepared for the self introduction, but I was, um, it, my, my introduction is kind of in the program, but just to make it as quickly as possible, uh, I was not born in the Tendikyo faith. Actually, my, my parents were Christian, belonging to an Episcopalian Christian church, but my grandparents were Buddhist. And um, I was classmates with uh, Reverend Wesley McCune when I was a child. So we, were, we went to school together when we were four years old all the way into college. And then one day, the Mikunis, if you know Scott Mikuni, came to my house. I was one of those kids that lived next door. All churches have these kids that ne live next door, right? Um, so I was one of those kids that, hey, we have this thing called Kote Ki, it's a iPhone drum band, do you want to join? And they said, okay. And that kind of drew my life into Tendukyo. Um, uh, certain things happened in my life, some trauma, some um, drug abuse by my parents, um, alcoholic abuse that drew me closer to Tendikyo, which I may share with you later. Uh, I don't want to discredit, but the Oyasato seminar played a big part in my, not just being a Tendikyo follower, but to be a missionary. So in 1986, after my application was actually declined twice. The first year and the second year, I was not allowed to go to the Oyasato seminar. But in the third year, as some of you may know, in those early days, you had to be born in a church. So initially, a lot of us um, were not allowed to go to the seminar, but third year, they finally allowed my application. And that actually changed my life to become more active in the church and also to be not just active, but an active missionary. And you know, if you have, uh, when Susumu or um, anybody else will probably question what, how did I get to that point? I'll probably share later, but I'm gonna pass the mic to my other panelists. So they can share their introduction. Hi everyone, how you doing? <laughs> Seen a couple of familiar faces here. Uh, some of them actually, I went to Shioka together. Anyway, uh, my name is Stephen Fujimoto. Uh, full name is Stephen Hideki Fujimoto. I'm actually, uh, um, well, I was born into a technical family, uh, but uh, I just didn't have any faith until uh, when I became an adult. Um, I'm actually a fifth generation of technical uh, follower, uh, to, be honest, to be more exact. However, I didn't have any faith uh, in it until 30, when I was in my uh, early 30s. Um, well, this was, uh, after my, uh, first marriage, uh, has been broke off, uh, my parents, uh, really introduced me to, uh, the faith. I think it's about time for you to, uh, really, uh, recapture yourself and, uh, just, you know, in other words, just, uh, study about Tenikyo and to be, you know, reborn into a new life. And I said, how do I do that? Uh, there's a program called Shuyoka in Japan, and uh, which I chose to go there on uh, 2004. 
uh, uh, I, I attended the uh, April May Joe that's English course and uh, what that really uh, was began to change my life really and uh, I did not know anything about technical like I said um, when I was in, okay, in my childhood uh, we did the monthly service uh, I was okay the only thing I was thinking is that I was trying to uh, escape from that day and uh, try to sneak out the back door and I, I was kind of asking my friends to call me in a certain time when the right before the uh, uh, the ultimate begins and then uh, oh sorry I gotta go get the phone call and then oh I'm sorry I gotta go so that's how I was really so I did not know how to do any autifity oh, shame to say uh, I did not know how to count I didn't know there was a ashikyo harote 21 times does it did anybody know that <laughs> anyway, so uh, and uh, what I did was, uh, of course, see the service and then Ashikyo uh, Choito Hanashi and then uh, Yorozuyo. For some reason, I don't know why, Yorozuyo was my favorite song. And uh, just, you know, just Yorozuyo, the, oh, that was the only song that stuck into my heart. And uh, I did not know the the Hitokudaru, Futakudari, the 10, uh, 12 chapters of. Uh, Mikagura Uta, until I went to Shioka. I was like, really? Well, this existed. I didn't know that. You know, and I didn't know what the Ofudesaki was actually until I went to New York Center. I was like, really? Well, this is just like a uh, Christian Bible. Like, oh, wow. Never seen this before. So I, you know, kind of, you know, that Tenkyo itch, uh, the, the um, passion started to grow into myself. And uh, I was like, wow, I have to really look into this faith. A lot more since I was born into this faith. So, uh, wow, well, I just kind of wasted my time. And, uh, well, anyway, so that Shuyoka uh, in, uh, back in 04 really changed my life. And I never thought about uh, becoming a technical minister afterwards and uh, becoming the head minister of uh, uh, Fukyosho, uh, which I established about 10 years ago, uh, in, uh, starting in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, <clears throat> to be more um, uh, exact, um, I, uh, I grew up in New York, actually, uh, not too far from New York Center, and uh, which, without knowing New York Center, I mean, I even though I was, used to live close to New York Center, I haven't really been there, so I didn't know anyone there. So, you know, I was too familiar with uh, New York Center. Anyway, um, after uh, when I graduated from Shuyoka and Kente Koshu, uh, we moved to uh, Georgia in 05, and that's the time, uh, the year 2005, December the 12th was the, uh, the, the first, uh, it was a beginning of uh, Shigeto America, which is my um, uh, skill show. And uh, I never thought that I would become this far to become a uh, uh, skill show 10 years ago. And uh, this is very honored. And uh, I know that there are a lot of people, I'm going to have to share this with you later on. Uh, a lot of people may think, wow, Atlanta, Georgia, is that in the South? Georgia, right? Yeah. And now that I'm living in Alabama, that's even further uh, west, southwest, I was like, oh my God, are you serious? What are you doing there? Do you know anybody who knows Tedekyo? Obviously not. I'm the only people there. I mean, I only, oh, okay, my family and I are the only people that knows Tedekyo and uh, doing a missionary. And a lot of them actually would often ask me, isn't that a challenging? I mean, how, how, how's everybody down there in the South? I mean, are they racist? Are they like a bunch of rednecks? Well, yeah, I mean, it's the same everywhere, you know? And I sometimes consider myself as a redneck, so well, hey, you know, I guess we're just another kind. Anyway, but um, surprisingly, it just, you know, if you're open to everybody, I know that people will be open towards you. And, uh, you know, this is going to, this story is going to be very interesting. I know this topic is about Nyoi uh, Gake. So, uh, yeah, I would like to share more of, the, uh, more of my experience later on with you. So, yeah. And uh, anyway, uh, this, I would just uh, like to end my uh, introduction. So, I'll pass it on to our uh, next David. person. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so glad to see all of you here. Um, it's kind of long, huh? Is it three hours? Two hours? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please bear with us and don't fall asleep, okay? <laughs> but anyway, uh, my name is actually Yokmei Inoue, but everybody call me Mei or Auntie Mei 
I don't know when I term auntie. <laughs> uh, in, in, in Hawaii, they all call you auntie when you get old. So I'm Auntie May. Um, oh, aloha. Aloha. Uh, aloha. Anyway, I hope you're here to have a good time. And um, of course, like he said, first generation, definitely. I never heard of Tenikyo until I was 19 years old. My boyfriend was Tenikyo. Okay, so um, um, on and on was a really, such a long ride to come to today. Um, I enjoy it, uh, but of course, there's a lot of ups and downs. And uh, before I know Tenikyo, I actually, Tenikyo was, at 19, that was the third religion that I studied. By 19 now, that's my third religion. I mean, that I know, come, come across. Since five years old, I went to a Buddhist school. So, a real monk that comes from the temple to teach you, so very serious, uh, very uh, good Buddhist school. Six years, all Buddhism, until I graduated from elementary school. And uh, age 13, uh, for some reason, my whole family wants to move to Hawaii, which I didn't want to come. And I cry and cry and cry every night. Believe it or not, I was really silly. I look at the moon every night and thinking that, and asking the moon if my friend is looking at the same moon that I'm looking at. That's how silly I was. Um, and eventually, believe it or not, for this gray hair, it started when I was, at that time, at 13 years old. Um, after crying for about a month and a half, two months, and then I started to grow here, the top came white. So anyway, if you guys don't want to have gray hair, don't be sad, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it really does a number on your, uh, your body. I, uh, no, I'm, I mean, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know how it work, but definitely uh, your mind, your spirit is connected with your body. You know, when you're happy, your head it will go away, right? Very simply put. So, um, so at very early age, I already had really a lot of white hair. But anyway, never mind about my white hair. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so anyway, when I went to Hawaii, it was very natural. I I was drawn to the Bible, so I studied with the Bible teacher for uh, several years. And uh, I like it. I mean, all religion try to teach you to be good, right? And do good, in your, you know, hopefully you live a good life. So, uh, yeah, so, and eventually uh, I have to work part-time because uh, my family is not rich. Uh, go to high school still yet. And, uh, and also have boyfriend. <laughs> so I have no time for studying the Bible. <laughs> So eventually, yeah, so um, that was the end of the story with the Bible, but, uh, and then I met my boyfriend, uh, and eventually I got a chance to go to Japan to study Japanese, and in return to, uh, in appreciation for my Kaito-san to uh, somehow help me to get, you know, to the Japanese school in Japan, so I, I promised him that I would do the Shiyoka, uh, to be honest, it's not really I want to know about Tenikyo. But in life, when it comes to religion and belief, it comes with timing. It took me a long time to be able to tell people that, yes, I am Tenikyo. So that, I'm teaching that is a very long story, so I think I should hand the mic over to someone else. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce uh, Yumi Litke from Fresno. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I had uh, an interesting uh, way of meeting the faith. Um, I lived in Japan. I was born in Colombia, South America, and then I moved to Japan. So I speak Spanish and Japanese. My Japanese is... Mada, mada, heta. But... Um, but I, I came here with my husband. I met him in Japan. He was deployed. Um, and then he brought us here. And, you know, 
total culture shock. But I grew up with my mom being a very mm, strong Christian Pentecostal. And then my father being a Buddhist, he will take me to the Buddhist uh, ceremonies and he will tell me, don't tell your mom. And I'm, so, of course, but I grew up with, with a strong concept of what God was and, you know, how, how to become in a relationship with God. And when we moved here, uh, my husband's aunt passed away. She was Japanese, and I was like, because he's Caucasian, he's white, and I'm like, your aunt is Japanese? And you never told me this? And now that she passed, you told me that she was Japanese? Like, that's crazy. Um, so I went to the memorial service for her, and it was in a Tenikyo church. And uh, I, I took my, my, my kids and my husband, because he was in the Navy, he was deployed. And uh, my kids sat through the whole service. And that was weird, because whoever knows my kids, you know, kids don't just sit down for, like, a long time. So I was like, wow, this is nice. Like, they can sit through this service. This is cool. I'm going to keep coming. And then uh, Reverend Yukimoto became kind of like a mentor and teaching me things. Um, and every, since I, I was with him and met him and I learned the teachings and I learned, you know, the Mikagurauta, um, he's, I will say everything, you know, I will say yes to everything Reverend asked me. Hey, you should do Shiokai. And I'm like, sure, let's do it. I didn't know it was that intense and you have to get up so early. And I'm like, hey, this is crazy. I'm getting up at five of them. Um, and it was weird because my husband was like, yeah, I'll take care of the kids. And I'm like, oh, okay, one one without kids. All right. <laughs> Sign me. And if it wasn't for that, it was weird because in one of the afternoons that I, I was praying, I, I opened the Ofurezaki and I was doing Shiokai and he said, uh, page 41, I'll never forget that. He said that I do not, you know, want you to come here, but if you do, you will be blessed forever. Literally uh, seven months after that, I got a diagnosis of cancer and it was really bad, like stage three, three slash four. And I remember Reverend Yukimoto saying, wow, God must really like you. And I was like, Reverend, you're crazy. Like, what? That doesn't make any sense. But I learned through that um, that I can, uh, you know, connect with people who are sick and going through, like, the worst hardships and be able to, you know, connect with them. Because it's easy to say, oh, you know, I'm going to go help people. But another thing is, like, I went through all that. Let me help you with it. So, um, it, like I said, it's a, it's a long story, but um, it, it was then when I established like a, a stronger connection with, with God the Parent. And I read the Ofurisaki, like he, you know, God the Parent was talking to me, and I, and I follow the, you know, the, the, the phrases, some phrases felt like it was directly like talking to me, like get up, get spirited, get joyous, do the service. And I was like, Ooh, okay, God's talking, I have to do it. And it, that that helped me, you know, just move a lot of my, my mind, uh, become more compassionate with people who are actually going through a lot of difficult times. And it helped me help them because now I can, I, I have a couple of friends that are going through a cancer ba battle in a, you know, I, I'm always trying to do the Nyoigake, like, hey, let me visit you, let me give you, um, you know, Osazuke, let me, let me read this to you, you know, maybe it, will, it may help you. So it, it really, the faith really helped me connect with people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm gonna try to direct some of the questions initially and then I'm gonna ask some of uh, the audience for some questions about their experiences. So um, initially, every, all, all of our four panelists have been in, uh, in the quote unquote secular workplace. Um, and so my question to our four panelists is, at your workplace, have you ever had the opportunity to share your faith with uh, your, your uh, coworkers? 
And if so, how did that go? And, um, and, and, and was there a conclusion to, to that experience? Um, let's start in order here. So Stephen, can you answer that question? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, how to uh, do a yoga uh, towards your coworkers? Yeah, um, I've been uh, actually uh, transferred to uh, like so many, uh, well, several uh, companies in the past for the last uh, four years. I worked with uh, three different locations. Uh, I'm a, a interpreter for the uh, automotive company right now. Uh, as you probably may or may not know, I live in Alabama right now, northern Alabama, a place called Huntsville. Uh, it's a Tennessee border, and uh, I uh, worked at a place called MTM, Mazda Toyota. Uh, that's the uh, Toyota and Mazda venture company, and uh, they, uh, they produce the uh, uh, new uh, model of uh, uh, EV, uh, Mazda CX-50. Uh, Toyota, you probably heard of uh, uh, Corolla Cross. Yeah, that's where they're, uh, they're made at. Anyway, um, you will get towards uh, your uh, co-workers. That's pretty uh, sensitive issue really here in America because, you know, we're not really allowed to speak, uh, talk about uh, our religion uh, or faith uh, of ourselves. But, uh, um, okay, there was once, um, well, because I work at the uh, line side and there was, because uh, I get to see injuries here and there every day. Somebody really seriously, they uh, lost their fingers they, uh, they uh, you know, something uh, fell off on their toe, even though they're wearing the safety shoes. They uh, broke their toes and, uh, you know, they have a very complicated uh, broken bones and they've been carried to the hospital. And uh, one of the Japanese uh, staff got really injured. And uh, as uh, for myself, I, uh, I was uh, into, oh, I'm an interpreter and uh, I had to take him to the hospital uh, nearby. And, um, I thought that this was an opportunity. Hey, um, as you know, that I'm a technical because I always introduce myself because I even put down on my resume that I went to uh, Shuyoka uh, for three years and uh, took a Kete Koshu uh, one and two. I uh, put everything in my on my resume. So technically, uh, the HR the whole company knows uh, who I am and uh, what what I've done. So uh, they by knowing as a myself as a technical. I, uh, I'm not really afraid to talk about my faith, really. I don't know. Uh, well, you know, I mean, that's my personality, really. I know some of you probably say, oh, man, how could you talk about your religion I mean, you know, you know, to a stranger? I, I don't know, because, like, you know, I guess that's my nature. I, I'm not really afraid to talk about, you know, thank you, really, to anybody. So uh, I offered this gentleman uh, at the hospital, would it be okay if I can administer to your sons again? And uh, did you know that your body's a thing borrow, a thing lend from God? He was like, oh, wow, I did not know that. You know, the fact that our body's a thing borrow. So can you tell me more about it? So uh, long story short, I just explained about uh, uh, Kashimoro Karimoro, which is a thing borrow, a thing lend from God, in my definition. And uh, amazingly, uh, you know, he's, I mean, I see a tears coming out of his eyes. And... Uh, you know, I mean, we cried together, really. And uh, I asked him, would it, be, would it be okay for me to administer the Sazuke? And he says, please. I mean, uh, I, I'll be very happy to uh, receive the Sazuke. So uh, just, I, I, I just administered the Sazuke in the, at the uh, hospital bed. And uh, of course, I mean, he didn't recover right away. But uh, it's like, you know, he told me, oh, it felt really good. It's like um, some, it feels like, uh, you know, the, um, some kind of energy went through my body. And, uh, yeah, just because I didn't do anything towards this. It's just God's, that, God that actually uh, working uh, through your body. So uh, I think that your sincerity was accepted by God. And, uh, yeah, he looked at me. Oh, wow. Who is this guy? I thought that this guy was a translator, but he does this. Hmm. So that's one of my experiments, really. And um, it's just that, uh, you know, my um, uh, thing is that uh, I know that sometimes we're afraid to, you know, to uh, express ourselves, even though ask others or asking uh, strangers to administer the Sasuke. But uh, just don't be afraid. I've learned this from uh, so many people uh, during the Shiyoka, uh, even from my parents. Uh, don't be afraid about uh, what you believe in. 
because this is who you are. So uh, I know it's hard sometimes to uh, open up yourself and introduce yourself and minister the sun's get. But uh, just think in this way, what if someone's sitting next to you? How about that? You know, I think it's almighty, isn't it? So that's how I always look at myself as, uh, you know, oh, every time I do a task at your know, workplace, OS was always sitting next to me or standing next to me. Well, it's better OS than sit next to me, I'm standing. So anyway, so uh, yeah, uh, that's how I really uh, put myself into that position. And, uh, you know, just try to miss Sasuke. Um, I am too, um, because I don't come from a church, I'm very open about my faith. I tell people that, in you know, God is one in you know, we, God wants us to be happy. That's the first thing I tell people when I'm introducing the faith. God wants us to be happy. But we are the ones that complicate our lives with, with crazy stuff. Um, um, but uh, for me, it's, it's really easy. I invite people to the church, to the service, and I tell them, you know, if you're a parent, what would you do for your child? Do you want for your child to be happy? Isn't that the best thing you can do for your child is to make sure they're happy? And people say, yeah, I didn't see it from the point of view of, of a parent, more like some faiths or some religions are from the point of view that if something bad happens, it's a punishment or that you need to, or you know, it's a karma or something that you probably did in a past life or some stuff like that. And I said, well, that, I mean, it, it's your belief. I don't try to change people's beliefs, but I believe that everything becomes a lesson and you can learn from it and, you know, just just transform it into like a positive experience. And a lot of people, when I was receiving chemotherapy, um, I will sit and, you know, sing the Yorosio and people will be curious because I had a lot of, I would put on crazy scars and, and sing, and I really was like, this is me being happy, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with being happy. Why do people think that they don't deserve it or they're not worthy of it? Like, for me, it's like, if you're sick, don't think it's a punishment. I think it's a way of, of God telling you maybe, just like I am with you right now, I'm able to relate to you and help you through your illness. And... I will offer people Oslazuki too. And in a way, like like I said, I'm very open about my faith. When people ask me, where do you, where do you believe? Where are you? I thought you were Christian or I thought you were Buddhist. Or, I I believe in God. I am Ken Mikyo. Um, because it's the faith, not a faith that was taught in me or instilled in me, but it's a faith that I actually got to see it from a a perspective far away from it and be like, wow, like I feel a connection with God through this faith. And I tell people, you know, some, some of our faiths have been, you know, you have to grow up like this or be this. And it's like, this is the first faith that I looked at it and I loved it and I loved the way that I felt about God through this faith. Like a true connection, like a true um uh, a, a true relationship with God and that's what we all want in the end is just have a good relationship and that's what I tell my uh, teacher friends I'm, I'm, I help uh, students with behavior issues and I also teach math and when I see somebody like struggling and I say hey um, do you want me to pray for you I can pray for you maybe you know do you want to talk about it and I'll be like well you know what I tell you and you know what that it means, it means that God wants us to be happy, like, why aren't we being happy right now? So that's a way that I try to spread the teachings and bring people to church and, and you know, translate. A lot of people speak Spanish that I bring to church and I translate for them and they're like, oh, this is so cool. Like, like he said, like, I, I never saw it this way. And, you know, I will be like, yeah, it's, it's a different way. It's a different perspective. And uh, it's not wrong, it's just different. So I'm, I'm very open about it. Uh, I share a lot, I try to do Nyoigake and, you know, Sasuke to whoever I explain. 
Whether they need it or not, it's like I still offer it. It's like, hey, let me pray for you. So we're praying about it. So that, that's. You know, I want to follow up, uh, Yemi. You, you, um, because not everybody can answer too much about this, but I think uh, Yumi's experience and recovery is all documented on her Facebook because she does such a good job of just speaking very openly about her experiences. You have so many pictures from your hospital bed and this is my third chemotherapy and, 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 and this is how it is losing your hair and this is how it is losing, you know, and, and how it hurts. And you have so many people responding back saying, I love you, Yumi, I'm praying for you. And you have so many, and, and, and uh, I know that you're not um, uh, specifically saying um, this is uh, God the parent, this is Oyasama. I think you say it in a very universal way, which I think is why it's so, you get so many responses. But out of those responses, have you ever had somebody really follow up with that with you and, and, and come to understand what you believe in? Yes, and actually a, a friend of mine just became, uh, she's a teacher and she was just diagnosed and uh, she was like, well, you know, I, I never responded to anything, but now that I'm going through this, it's like, like, how did you do this? Like, how do you not suffer? Like, this is a lot of suffering. And I say, yes, but, but just think about it in a, in a way that I'm learning something from this. Before I didn't appreciate things the way, like the things we take for granted, like drinking water, that actually tastes like water when you're going through chemotherapy, it's like somebody stirred like a, a rusty spoon in the water. So water doesn't taste like water when you're going through chemo. You're like, well, it tastes nasty or it hurts when you swallow. Or when I, I had shingles, so the pillowcase will stick to my head. And it was, showers were very painful because your skin becomes very sensitive and your eyes become very blurry. So I couldn't drive because I'll be like, Oh man, I can't see. What the heck? So, uh, I was able to, like he said, document, and I said, well, you know, this is teaching me to value my eyes. Like, I love my eyes. In, in the morning, um, I take a minute to appreciate and to thank God. It's like, wow, I can taste water. I can see good. My skin feels great. Everything I touch doesn't hurt. This is awesome. Like, I feel good. And before, and this is what I told people, don't wait until something bad happens to you or a loved one to become appreciating. Appreciating now because, trust me, even when you have a common cold and you can't taste food, like, it's like annoying. And right now, like, don't wait for it. Start a, like a gratitude journey right now. And I tell people that, like, you know, let's be grateful. When people like become focused on negative things, I'm like, let's let's switch it and like let's see what we have that it's awesome. Like you have, you know, healthy children, you have a home, you have a dependable car, the the air that you breathe smells like air. Um, you're not choking at night because you're you know, you, your mouth is dry, like you can taste food, which is it's awesome. Everybody knows me knows that I love food and when you lose your taste you're like, Ugh. It's awful. Um, so yeah, we are appreciative. The faith helps you to feel that way. And 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 you hear it a lot. Oh, gratitude and appreciation. But a few people really take the time in the morning to be like, oh God, wow, I'm grateful for my, my skin. Like it feels good. Today I feel good. Like I don't have problems walking or tasting or feeling. Like I feel great. This is awesome. So yeah. Thank you very much, Amy. Thank you. Um, yeah. Craig, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, uh, our faith in the workplace. Can you share some of your experiences? I've been working in the hospitality hotel business for almost 20 years. And, um, you know, in fact, I remember one of my senseis from Japan, one of the reverends from Japan coming over and I said, and I was kind of struggling to think, how can I possibly do um, salvation work and work at the same time? It's like you're, when you're working, you're so focused on your, 
in my case, it's not just a nine to five job. It's like six thirty in the morning to six thirty p.m. on on manager at a hotel, and I I'm often there twelve to thirteen hours daily. And when when it's my day off, I'm totally burnt like a rice crispy. You know, <laughs> so like, and if anyone knows my history, you know, I've done missionary work extensively door to door, and I'm used to having this full focus on. You know, salsa cake, going out door to door, talking to people, and then you know the energy level now that I'm over. <laughs> uh, what do I do? How do I do it? So, you know, the the sensei said, "Oh, everybody in Japan is the same." I mean, that's not the answer I was hoping for, right? But I want to share a story where the timing was perfect, and when you talk to Oyasama, I think I tried to talk to Oyasama daily. In fact, I want to share with you this book. It's a it's a notebook journal, and I call it my 140th anniversary notebook, which I started last year in October. And every day I made it point to go to my church to do to pray before I go to work, and I bring this book to the church with this little quiver called a quiver, and I put a pen in there, and I and I sit in front of the shinden in the, into the shrine, and I just say, okay, where is someone inspired? And what should I do? And then I write them up. So it seemed like, well, oh, it's going to be a hell thing anymore. I'm really feeling grouchy. Please help me. You know? <laughs> but um, I want to show you a story, which was, was um, when you, and I, I want to ask all the participants to see if they've done this before, because I've done this before when I was doing door to mission work, where what does it mean to be a tool for us? It's, and it's this idea of being, the, as in Japanese, oyasama no dobi, how to be an instrument of oyasama, right? And it's so powerful when you let go and you don't put your human thinking behind it, and you just ask every day, I want to do save somebody, please help me oyasama. So let me tell you about the story where there is a woman who was pregnant at my workplace. I was working at the front desk, and she had a miscarriage three times. So the fourth time, she was having a baby, and I told her, let me talk to you about Oyasa. I didn't say I'm think. Let me talk to you about Oyasa. And she's the founder of the Tenjiku religion. And so I sat down with her in Tenjiku. Oyasama saved people. The first salvation was to grant a safe childhood. And I talked to her about the three aspects of safe childhood. And I said, although we don't pray for safe child, let me pray for you. And I did a sophistry. And during the next three months, I, every other week, oh, can I pray for you so that you have a safe childhood? And I started doing a service in my, room, my house, and I would bring a banana. Oh, I, I, Offer this to the shrine. Please have this banana so you have a safe child. Well, she had a safe child. Another girl in my front desk had gotten pregnant. And so I again sat her down and said, Oh, you know, I prayed for so so. You want to know my religion take on safe childbirth? Well, there's this woman. Her name is Oya Sama. And, you know, the three aspects of safe childbirth. And, you know, I had to study this stuff, and I was lucky that I used to work at the translation, sen translation section in, um, in Tendi, in Ojiba. So I had to do that translation for safe childbirth. Oh, you know, there's three aspects, uh, safe carriage, safe birth, uh, speedy birth, and safe afterbirth. And so while telling this story, let's pray that you have, and I don't know, uh, this is weird, when you become, when you ask where someone to work to, to me, let's pray that you have your birth in 26 minutes. I have no idea why I said that. And so every week I did the same thing. She said, oh, here's an apple that I, I um, offered at my shrine. You know, please, let's pray that you have a safe and fast childbirth. This is going to be your first baby. And so you may have some issues, but, you know, you lean on God. You let out where someone do her do her blessings, and I'm sure you have a safe child. Let's pray for 26 minutes. Guess what happened? 
And this is just this year. You know, she gave birth to six. She had a 26 minute birth. Wow. She was I couldn't even take that epidural. And it just came out. <laughs> How long was it? Well, it's about 26 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. You had a 30 minute birth and this is your first child? So, did I plan it out, like script it, like this is what I'm going to say? No, it was just very inspiration. But it started off with, oh, you know, Oyasama, I really want to do uh, salvation work. Please use me as your instrument and guide me to that. Because when we have that self human thinking that we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and we're going to be disappointed. However, when you put Oyasama first, oh, I guarantee she's going to open some doors for you. And we need to be there to be her instruments, to have a clear mind, no judgment, and just allow her to work her, her, her thing. Um, and I think, and this is no judgment to anybody who else that does it differently. We don't talk about Oyasama enough, right? We talk about Kashimoto Karimono, or I think Lent Think Bower, we talk about Hinochi, but we don't really talk our first conversations. Well, let me talk to you about Bodhisattva, right? So I think um, that whole experience, I mean, invoking Oyasama before we go we, to allow us to be her instrument. And when we talk to new people, it's like, well, let me talk to you about our founder's Oyasama. You know, it's not about just the teachings and the doctrine of any care, but oh, oil summer, right? And I think if people can have faith in oil summer, understand that oil summer is like living, oil summer is here with us, and as Stephen has said, you know, she's there and she's sitting right here, she's standing by you, then, then that power or that presence will absolutely show itself, okay? Do this, would this woman become pendicular? I don't know, but it allowed me the opportunity to do new okay? Uh, the teaching. And I tell you, I was at the front desk. Okay, there's somebody at the front desk. Oh, just one more minute. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera, I'm going, oh, yeah. <laughs> she's laughing, but oh, it's almost, uh, it's almost finished, let me do this part. But, um, you know, you never know the seeds that we plant. I mean, is it extreme? Yes, not, but that's what I get for asking my son, well, please show me someone to help, you know, right? So you have to just be fearless. And I'm going to use that term once in a while, because someone mentions fearless in one of our discussions. But, um, yeah, I just want to show you that this actual thing happened. It wasn't scripted plan, it just literally it just came out of my mouth, and I wasn't thinking about the outcome, and it was a wonderful blessing for me to see as well as to share. Thank you very much, Craig. <laughs> One of the lines I always use when I talk about, I, I do talk about always a lot. And one of the lines I always use is, I think you guys can understand it. I always say, always someone is really cool. <laughs> I really think, I mean, honestly, because she taught us things that is really uh, different. And she did things very different, very differently. And that's why she left us the Hinagata to follow. Um, so I really think she's one really cool lady. And um, do you know that, I mean, this is up, um, away from the workplace thing, but really fast. Um, one point, I, I forgot how long ago, but somebody actually told me, do you guys know that Tiny Girl is the only religion in the world. Uh, this, is, this is spoken by a professor in a university who studied religion. And any girl is only religion in the world, the book uh, of Ofurasaki is written by the founder of the religion. Because when you talk about Buddhism and, and the Bible, um, Buddha didn't write out anything. I know, because I studied Buddhism too. And then he didn't write out anything. Everything was written 
um, at least many, many years after they are gone uh, by all disciple, uh, much later. And so is the Bible. So I, I think that in itself, I thought was really cool too. <laughs> so, okay, go back to the workplace. Um, I have a very interesting story. I think, uh, well, number one, um, I was selling, a anybody know magic game cards? Okay, my, my son, who is my boss, I work for him, and uh, we had a convention, and um, we were there. Um, the last day I met someone, uh, he came by, and then for some reason, nobody came to our, our booth, and then nobody was around, so we could talk for a long time. But the amazing thing is, I normally talk to people about religion and God. But with this person, I didn't mention a thing about God or religion. We talk about sports, news, politics, and everything. And one of the things we talk about was like uh, traveling. And then, so, of course, I go to Japan a lot. So I go, oh, have you ever been to Japan? And then this person said, oh, no, this is one place I really want to go to. And then, so, okay, good. Um, um, I have a place for you to stay. It's only $10 a night. <laughs> <laughs> and the meal is only like $2.50 for the breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, so, so, so this person actually was interested. And uh, we became friends on Facebook. And then we, so, so finally, a few months after that, and that, after a few months, actually, believe it or not, I have forced Yukase for my Fukuro show to go to uh, Shioka in Japan. So of course, I have to take them there because none of them speak Japanese or know about Penny. So, so I message her, I say, hey, I'm going in a few months, so are you gay? And then, <laughs> and then you go, yeah, why not? So he actually, According to him, he spent his last bucks, you know, last, he, he wasn't rich or anything, but whatever money he had, he spent it on that trip and it went to Tenny with me. But long story short, this person actually, from that one year that he went to Japan, he went every year for at least. Lucio, how, how many years? That person is sitting right here. <laughs> With the first one, second one with your girlfriend. <laughs> Third one, you did the. Uh, what did you do? The three month course. Shioka. Okay. And yeah, so, he, um, yeah, it's he. His story is amazing. And you know what? The first time I met him was in Honolulu. Why I was trying to sell him stuff. Okay. <laughs> so that's my workplace. <laughs> And then the second time I met him was in Tokyo. So this person actually took the leap of faith by just me telling him it's only $10 a night. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come? <laughs> and then, so that was all his decision, his choice. And I think he can vouch to that by making that big step um, eventually his life kind of changed, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so it's amazing because you never know what will happen. It really depending on a person. But he really remember how much he gained uh, the experience and the joy that he felt when he was following me to Tani and everything from Tokyo to Tani. Um, and then he remembered to come back again the very next year you know, for whatever money he have, and then, uh, yeah, so continue. Um, so I thought that is his, um, I don't want to take the credit because it's all his choice. You know, I am just giving him the, um, how would you say that, um, the opportunity, you know, to connect with Tenny, to connect with Constance. 
And um, another one, um, also in my workplace, I did Nioi Kake. Out of all places, was in the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> because she's in a different office, I'm in a different office, and then we somehow met in the bathroom, and I know each, we know each other. No, no, no. <laughs> And then, and then all of a sudden, I don't know how it gets started. And we're just standing there by the thing about 15 minutes. And then we talk and talk. And basically, I just share what I understand about Tandy Curl. About, I think first question is, what, uh, I always ask people, what do you think God, <laughs> like what do you think God expects from you in this lifetime? And... Some people give me a pretty good answer. And at the end, I just say, only one answer. Only one answer. Basically, God just wants us to live joyously. Right? And then when they hear that, it's like, wow, it's so simple. It's not the Ten Commandments, you know? Thou shalt not steal, steal or whatever, you know? It's just one thing. God only wants you to live joyously. And it's just like the parents watching the children. If they're joyous, the parents are happy. But it's a different level because it's God to parents and we're living on earth, right? So um, so I asked her that and I say, I, I'm talking to you because you're young and I want you to make good choices in your life and continue uh, and hopefully you find your joy and happiness in life. I think a lot of people are looking for happiness in life, right? Um, so, so the 15 minutes, I just share with her about the teaching about Oyasama and everything. And, and that was it. So we go back to our office. And then, oh, I also mentioned to her about, if you want to know about more about the teaching, there's three months course in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to, oh, it's going to cost you this much. <laughs> I talk about money all the time because I'm Chinese. <laughs> But it's the back of life, right? I mean, you know, everybody is still working for the money. So anyway, um, and guess what? Only a week after that, and she come to me, oh, Auntie May, I think I want to go. And, and she went. So it's, it's interesting. You never know where and when you can do near kake. But as long as you always hold uh, sama and come sama in your mind, spirit, and your heart, um, you will recognize the opportunity to do it. You know, you will, you will know when the opportunity comes. And that's also another one, but um, it's kind of sad because somebody that's sitting next to my desk, um, he is, I just share with him from time to time, and eventually, he decided to go to do the shiroka too. Uh, he, he decided on his own. I did, I have never, oh, this is my style. When I kneel and cut it to people, I don't push. I always, you can say, put the ball in the court. You know, it's up to them to decide what to do with their life. I'm just presenting the choices. And then, so he decided to go, so he went. And he's this guy, he's, um, over 300 pounds, um, over six feet tall. So when he in Japan, when he was in Japan, he wrote as no sound. He was really big. So he went to Japan uh, in three months' time. He lost. Is it too much? 60 kilo. He lost a lot of weight. So eventually, he came back after three months. Came back to the office, and then. Um, one of the workers came to me and basically he was kind of crying because what happened was um, somebody passed away in our office and he's also kind of chubby. And actually he's the first person that I actually tried really hard to tell him to go to Shioka because uh, I really felt like he, he needed because he's lost and he's, he lost his mother, he's really, 
have no connection with the father. So I really felt like he need to find his path. You know, in, in like, he actually passed away at age 40 years old. Okay, so, um, he came, this other worker came to me and said, oh, Etime, how come you didn't tell him to go to Shioka? I say, oh, you don't know how much I tried. See, the thing is, the one that I didn't try, they went. The one I tried, it just didn't happen. So everybody's inan and destiny is all different. And the individual has to make the choice, right? I, I actually almost, I think, like I said, he's the one that pushed so hard to, because I really felt he needed. But uh, again, it didn't work according to what I wanted, you know. But what happened is this person, <clears throat> believe it or not, he can see the aura of a person. And that's the first time he told me. I was shocked. He said, you know when Jacob, that was the person that went, the big sumo son, he went, he came back, his aura was different. Totally di different. He said, totally changed and he was good, you know. How come you didn't send Benson, the, uh, the other person, to go to Shioka? That would probably help him too. But and he cried, and we both cried, because that is someone that I really push and try, but it didn't work. So sometimes in life, you have to let it be, and you try your best, and um, it is what it is. But yeah, those are the, some stories from my workplace. I, I think, as you can see, we have such interesting people, and I, and I know there's a lot of stories out, out in the audience too. We, we were planning to have a question and answer session, but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to squeeze that in uh, at, at this time. Um, I, I do want to say one just personal thing uh, up, about uh, uh, Yukme. Oh, the way I have a relationship with her is she, she did something so interesting. She said, in Chinese culture, we observe the lunar calendar. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, always oh, yes, time. She talked about January 26th, October 26th, all this 26th. But actually, that's a lunar date. And so I said, so, so what, what does that mean? She goes, well, it means I'm going to go to Ojiba January 26th on a lunar January 26th, which is like March 1st, something like that. You know, totally different solar date. And she said, I went to Ojiba for the 120th anniversary and I was in the Shinden by myself on March 1st or whatever date it was because she knew in her heart that that was a lunar January 26th and that was to her a true anniversary. That was the first time I had ever heard that. So think about this. Back at home, if you ever uh, look at the lunar calendar, look at lunar calendar dates, because at, during Oyasama's time, there was no calendar. We didn't have iPhones or whatever, right? So whenever they said, oh, when is the service? Oh, look at the moon. Oh, it's about this, it's like five more days, and it's gonna be service time. We should be getting, going over to uh, Shoyashiki village, or you know, uh, to the, the residents, right? Because it's almost gonna be, because they know by the shape of the moon, that it's almost gonna be the 26th of that lunar month. We tend to not look at nature as much for our guidance, but that was something that Yukme and I shared, and I thought that was a wonderful thing, so thank you very much. I know, I know so. Um, you know, our workshop was how-to, and it's really not a how-to. Clearly, it's more about all of our different experiences doing uh, Sharing. You don't want to call it nyoigake because it's not like we're going to go out there with our hapis and sing. You didn't hear that from any of our panelists today. You didn't hear, we need to do it this way. We need to do it this way. Everybody has their own way of doing nyoigake and sharing our joy, sharing our faith with others. And I think especially, you know, when, when we're in uh, our United States, Hawaii, or other English-speaking countries where we know Nobody has ever heard of Tenikyo. It's a different perspective, sharing our faith 
than in an area where everybody has heard of Tendi High School baseball, everybody has heard of Tendi High School rugby or, 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 or uh, you know, judo. Nobody in America knows any of that. So everything that we say is actually the first time they're hearing about it. So, you know, it, it is our shared experience. And we hope that young people, and I see some young kids here, we hope that we, our experience can help some of your experiences because you are the same. You are in a, a school of 3,000 kids and you are the only technical person there. And sometimes it's really hard talking about your faith because nobody knows anything about it. And, and, but we want to encourage you um, to, to, to have faith, know that other people have gone through this uh, uh, and it's a shared experience and that we, 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 uh, we're, we cheer you on, we cheer all the young people, we cheer all the new uh, technical people on to share our experience and share our perspective because once we share it, we realize how beautiful Oyasama's perspective, the God the Parents perspective is of the world, not a violent place, a joyous place wanting to mature. All of those words, all of the ways that is, is so unique to people that when we share it, we realize how, how, uh, how, uh, how, how much we take for granted and how wonderful it actually is. Because we don't have time for uh, questions, I hope that during these next two days, you have opportunities to talk to our panelists about their experiences because they have so much more to talk about. <laughs>